this video, we are going to talk about the 10 things about Xi Jinping. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. A friend recently dropped off a fresh off the press copy of Xi Jinping, China's governance. It is a collection of speeches, key points from speeches, photographs, interviews, and a biographical sketch of Chinese President Xi Jinping. The book, which has over 500 pages, was produced by several different parts of the Chinese government bureaucracy. While I can't do justice to all of the information presented, here are some things I learned from reading Xi's musings and those of others about him. Here, the list of the 10 things about Xi Jinping. Let's start. Number 10. I have a dream. Xi Jinping's China dream appears to be one of the defining features of his presidency in China. It is a symbol of patriotism, innovation, and unity. One can only do well if one's country and nation do well. According to Xi, Chinese everywhere should contribute to realizing the China dream. A united Chinese nation is our shared root. Profound Chinese culture is our shared soul. And the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation is our shared dream. Taiwan should prepare as well. Number 9. Dare to put Deng Xiaoping in front of me. The demonstrators claim the legacy of the Chinese communist patriarch who died just before Hong Kong's return to China in 1997 but negotiated the handover with the British 30 years ago. Deng Xiaoping, who ordered troops to quell student democracy protests in Beijing in 1989, is an odd choice of patron saint. Number 8. A Man of Letters She mentions reading as one of his favorite pastimes, possibly the only one for which he still has time, and he appears to be a fan of Russian literature. He can name more than 10 favorite Russian authors, including Gogol, whose works must resonate with him as he attempts to clean up corruption in the Chinese bureaucracy. Number 7. The tail will not wag the dragon. In the rest of China, there is a news blackout on the Hong Kong protests as of Sunday afternoon. Beijing does not want its citizens to form opinions. Hong Kong has 7.2 million residents, while the mainland has 1.3 billion. Xi Jinping must demonstrate to both groups that he is in charge of the script. An overtly political demonstration on the mainland would have been dispersed in minutes. Hong Kong is distinct due to its one country, two systems formula, which guarantees autonomy and freedom of expression. Number 6. Lei Feng Lives No biographical sketch of a senior Chinese official can pass up the chance to honor the, possibly fictitious, model communist citizen Lei Feng by embracing his superhuman work ethic and devotion to Communist Party ideals. Xi Jinping is no different. Number 5. Idealistic students are Achilles' heel again. The middle-aged academics leading the Occupy Central movement are easier to predict and anticipate. The real threat is university students who began a class boycott last Monday, saying they wanted to be counted even if Beijing remained deaf to their demands. China has distilled an opposition movement with a clear sense of purpose through its uncompromising stance on electoral reform no small feat for a constituency normally focused on their books and career prospects. Despite pepper spray, kettling, and the detention of their leaders, the students were still making their voices heard by the weekend. Number 4. She Plays to Win she has the competitive spirit. In discussing his desire for China to become an innovation nation, she expresses his dissatisfaction with the country's second-tier status, saying, We cannot always decorate our tomorrow with the yesterdays of others. We cannot always rely on the scientific and technological achievements of others to advance. For him, the answer is overwhelmingly indigenous innovation. Most importantly, we should unwaveringly pursue an independent innovation path with Chinese characteristics. Only by controlling key technologies can we truly take the lead in competition and development, as well as ensure our economic, national, and other security. Scientific and technological competition is like short track speed skating, he concludes. Number 3. She never shows you his sweat. She does not complain. Despite the fact that he claims to spend all of his free time working, he does not complain. Instead, he simply states, since the people have placed me in the position of head of state, I must prioritize them above all else. Remember my responsibilities that are as heavy as Mount Tai. Always be concerned about the people's security and well-being, and work conscientiously day and night. Share the same feelings with the people. Share both good and bad times with them, and work in concerted efforts with them. She's life in pictures also suggests someone who is calm, in control, and enjoys being president.
He is either constitutionally better suited to being president of a great power than most recent U.S. presidents, or he simply has a better public relations team. Number two, Xi is a true believer. Xi is a devout follower of the Communist Party. Indeed, the Chinese president has harsh words for officials who worship Buddha, seek God's advice for solving their problems, perform their duties muddle-eadly, yearn for Western social systems and values, lose faith in the future of socialism, or adopt an equivocal attitude toward political provocations against the CPC leadership. He may have a revelation later in life, but there is no room at the end right now. Number 1. She loves the classics. Although many of Xi's speeches contain the same tedious socialist rhetoric as those of his predecessors, she frequently peppers his remarks with quotations from Chinese philosophers. When discussing the development of Chinese youth, he says, Learning is the bow, while competence is the arrow, and virtue elevates, while vice debases. Indeed, in a speech to Peking University professors and students, she quotes at least 40 different ancient Chinese thinkers. Nobody says it like an ancient Chinese philosopher. That's it for today. We hope you found our video interesting. Please give us a feedback about today's topic and leave a comment if you are interested covering a specific topic. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads. In the end, thanks for watching and see you next time. It was our pleasure to spend some time with you. Thank you for watching the WTH channel. Let us know what you think of this video in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe for more content.